Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today I wanted to talk to you yet again about the new NVIDIA RTX cards, which are officially launching today. People are starting to receive their pre-orders and hopefully everyone that did pre-order was happy with the performance because pre-ordering is really never a great idea when it comes to hardware until you have the actual performance numbers. And with so much of the discussion going on around RTX right now, I wanted to talk about whether or not RTX cards were actually rushed and just kind of give my opinion on the whole situation because in the back of my mind when I was doing testing there were certain certainly a lot of questions that I had raised in my mind about you know why these cards are here um, why there aren't any ray tracing games out right now for these cards and you know why Nvidia felt like they needed to really just shove these out the door and get them into the hands of gamers as fast as possible when they have conceivably no competition in the marketplace whatsoever from AMD. They've got Navi on the horizon, but the latest rumors for that are saying that it's going to be a mid-range launch, just like they did with Polaris a couple of years ago, and with them really seeming that like they're doing semi-custom business for the next generation of consoles, that kind of seems like it's going to be likely, and you know, with NVIDIA possibly pushing out 7 nanometer as soon as next year, that could be why they wanted to get these cards out now so that, you know, gamers didn't feel upset when the new 7 nanometer cards come out in a year to replace these, if that's possible. This is just going, that's based on rumor and speculation. But I wanted to talk about why these cards would be rushed. And I mean, every, I mean, even though they have no competition in the marketplace and it doesn't really seem like a whole lot of reason to rush them, the actions that were portrayed by NVIDIA leading up to this release speak volumes otherwise, um, starting off with things like the vague graphs that they had. Um, they, all of the graphs that NVIDIA had pushed out prior to release were very vague at best, showing things like double the performance in ray tracing versus Pascal cards with no actual FPS numbers and virtually no discussion whatsoever about rasterization performance and how it was going to stack up compared to previous generations, which they had traditionally done in the past with new architecture releases. And then on top of that, the press got drivers very late for the RTX cards. I had only got my cards a day before I got the drivers, but I still had to sit on the cards for over 24 hours without being able to do any testing. And I heard from other reviewers that they were getting their cards even earlier on in the week than that, around like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was kind of staggered with the cadence that people were getting their cards. But no doubt about it, anyone that got the cards prior to Friday had to sit on those cards for anywhere from one to three, maybe even four days, waiting for drivers to be released so that they could actually test the cards, which ended up only giving us about four days to test. We had the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday reviews had to be up Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. And I was really pushing. I ended up rendering out my video at like midnight on Tuesday because I was doing regression testing on a couple of cards and I had to wait for that press driver because I didn't want to use different drivers for regression testing versus the new cards. I wanted to use the same driver for everything. So I had to wait to have that driver and then I had to benchmark for pretty much four days straight, um, going on almost no sleep, which I'm just recovering from now today. And it was just, it was kind of really disappointing in that regard, even though when I saw the performance, I was very impressed, at least with the 2080 Ti. I think the 2080 Ti is an absolute monster of a card, but with the prices being $1,200, $1,300, $1,400 possibly at, at the end of the day, it's just going to be out of the reach for the vast majority of gamers, and even a lot of enthusiasts are probably not going to be willing to go ahead and shell out that many crackers for a new 2080 Ti, which is offering about 20, 25 to 35% performance increase over the previous generation, except for when maybe async compute is used properly with Vulkan, then maybe you're looking at 35 to 40% increase. And on top of that, really what they're going to be, if they're going to be purchasing it, they would be purchasing it on the promise of ray tracing being delivered later on and DLSS, which both on their own are very impressive pieces of technology. And I definitely want to see them in more games in the future. But with NVIDIA not having any, not working with any developers to make sure we had ray tracing available at release, I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, released last week. They conceivably could have had ray tracing ready in that game so we would have at least one title to test with ray tracing outside of the Star Wars demo, which was very controlled from NVIDIA. We didn't have any way to tweak settings, just two resolutions and ray tracing running on both of them. So no way, no way to compare ray tracing performance on versus off in any way whatsoever. And they could have had that done with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, we're still here waiting for a post-release patch to add in the ray tracing performance. And why 
would NVIDIA do this? Why, if they're, if they're talking about nothing but ray tracing performance leading up to these cards coming out, why would they hold it back? I think the answer really lies in all the information that we had coming from Gamescom and everything with the performance on ray tracing titles that they were able to show off initially. Metro Exodus, Battlefield Five, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The, all the rumors said that it was pretty much in the toilet, running at like 1080p, 60 frames per second on a $1,200 plus graphics card. And not too many people are going to go out and buy a $1,200 card just to play at 1080p so that they could take advantage of ray tracing. That's just not realistic. It's an impressive technology, but it just doesn't seem like it's ready yet. And if they had ray tracing available at launch, the vast majority part of the discussion would have been about how bad the performance is on ray tracing, and everyone would have been even more upset about these cards than they are right now with the performance gains that they have and the price point that they are sitting at. And they definitely didn't want to have that bad press at launch. So that's really my theory why I think they ended up rushing these cards out and not having ray tracing ready at launch. I think that they did that intentionally to steer the conversation away from the bad performance of ray tracing and rather focus on the performance gain that performance gains they had from just basic rasterization which we've had for so long now and when it comes to the rasterization performance the only card in this lineup that makes any sense whatsoever is the 2080 ti but we're looking at like an almost 100 percent price increase for about a 30 percent uh, performance increase, and then you look at the GTX, or say the RTX 2080, which is being priced at $800, and you've got 1080 Ti's out there for less than that new, and even lower than that, if you're looking on the used market on eBay, and the 2080 and the 1080 Ti performed almost identically. In some cases, the 1080 Ti was even performing better, despite being clocked lower with just the regular boost clock. We're not even talking about overclocking. Um, the Pascal and Touring pretty much overclocked to roughly the same numbers, around 2,000 to 2,100 megahertz is what you're looking at on a best-case scenario. Um, Touring doesn't really overclock any higher than what Pascal could, at least in the testing that I've done so far. So we've got the 2080 with a higher base clock than the 1080, uh, the higher boost clock than the, than the 1080 Ti, boosting up to 1,900 megahertz in most cases in the games that I tested, while the 1080 Ti was around... 1800 to 1850 and it just made no sense whatsoever for someone to go out and pick up an RTX 2080 right now when you can get those 1080 Ti's for so much cheaper and in some situations it's even beating it except for in the very most optimized titles for the new touring architecture like Wolfenstein 2 or Doom which are both using the Vulkan API. So I wanted to do this video today to just kind of raise the discussion and continue it on down below in the comments. So please let me know your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions, everything down in the comments so that we can carry on this discussion and let me know whether or not you think RTX was rushed. Why do you think it was rushed? Do you think ray tracing is going to be worth it at the end of the day? Which unfortunately we just don't really have any way of testing right now outside of the very controlled demo on Star Wars Reflections from NVIDIA, which we cannot test on versus off. It's just... It's kind of a mess really at this point, and it's it's disappointing because when I look at the 2080 Ti's performance, I'm very impressed with it. I'm just like, some, a lot of people were like, oh my god, it's only getting 20 FPS more at 4K I'm like, I'm, uh, from the 1080 Ti, and I'm like, well, yes, it is only 20 FPS more, but when you're talking about a game going from 40 FPS to 60 FPS, that's a very large increase when it comes to the 4K resolution, which is really what these cards seem like they're targeted for, although NVIDIA's marketing would not have you led to believe that, which I think was just kind of a misstep on their part. They chose to focus so much on ray tracing rather than rasterization performance, and then unfortunately we just don't have ray tracing right now. So the name on the box, RTX, right now is pretty much meaningless. And I, like I said, I look forward to seeing it in the future. I want to test it. I want to compare it on versus off because I know when it's working and everything like that, it's going to look absolutely mind-blowing. We've all seen the tech demos on it. It is definitely the next step in graphics, but I don't think it's going to be realistic on this generation of hardware, especially when you're having to spend a $1,200 entry-level entry fee to get access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, guys. I do look forward to the discussion down in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And if you're new around here, don't forget you can always ring the notification bell. Oh, wait, no. That's if you've been around here for a while. Yeah, that's what, that's what I usually say. I got it mixed up. If you've been here for a while, ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content. If you're new, you can ring it as well. I'm not going really, to really stop you on that one. 
So, yeah, I will see you all tomorrow for another video, which will very likely be ultra-wide performance on the new Touring-based graphics card. So I will see you then for that video. Sarah.